sighted the first commercial oil well in North America. That's all that's sad. There's I mean there's a visitor center too. So this is like this is like no, 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 no. it's a full show game, man. Alrighty guys, so we're here. Museum of Oil. Yeah, it, there's a fee, but we can go do the outside first and then pay inside. So there's a marker here for the first well ever drilled. James Williams and North America's first commercial oil well. An important discovery has just been made in the township of Enniskillen. A party is digging a well at the edge of the bed of bitumen. Struck upon a vein of oil, the supply of fluid thus accidentally discovered will continue on an almost inexhaustible source of wealth, yielding at the lowest calculation not less than $1,000 per day of profit. In 1858, the year oil history was created. After digging about 14 feet into clay at this location, James Miller Williams struck North America's first commercial oil well. The Great Western Railway was extended from London to Port Sarnia in 1858 and the plank road built soon after allowed crude oil to transport from oil springs to Sarnia where the oil was shipped out by water. Williams first well was a hole dug with a pick and a shovel. It was then cribbed with wood to keep the dirt walls from caving in. The oil seeped in from the bottom and it could be removed by hand pumps or buckets at a rate of 40 to 60 barrels per day. The timing of Williams well was perfect. The commercial potential of crude oil was enormous. Oil lamps for indoor lighting quickly became popular as kerosene offered a cheap and safe fuel solution. So this is it guys. This is the first oil well in North America. This, this is what launched the petroleum industry here. The first oil well in Canada. The substance is a dark color and has a strong pungent smell. If clarified, we see no reason why it should not make a splendid lamp oil. On this site, James Miller Williams built Canada's first crude oil refinery and founded the world's first integrated oil company. He recognized the market potential of kerosene, a byproduct of refining process as a lamp oil. Traditional lamp oils such as whale oil had grown scarce and expensive and kerosene offered a cheap and safe alternative. Kerosene from Canada soon entered the world markets. Abraham Gesner, he was the father of kerosene. Crude oil was commonly called skunk juice because of its rotten egg smell. To get rid of the smell, Williams used an agitator to mix chemicals into his crude oil as it was being heated. Williams' definitive refinery consisted of an upended iron kettle resting on a bottom kettle. When the oil in Williams' still was heated, the vapors rose to the top and condensed his kerosene through the coiled tube called the worm condenser. The thick residue left at the bottom of the kettle was typically burned to generate heat for the next batch of crude. So this is the refinery. First oil refinery in Canada. So they'd burn the fuel, the kerosene vapor would come into here and be collected in there. When they refined the bitumen, the Tripp Brothers could have sold its byproduct kerosene as an ideal lamp oil. Instead, they threw it away. In a world looking for a safe and clean lighting oil, the Tripps failed to recognize the potential laying beneath their feet. Dr. Abraham Gesner was a Canadian geologist and inventor who perfected the process to produce lamp oil from petroleum. So these are the derricks. Tripod derrick. This is the pump jack. See the pulley? This is the well. So they use these for drilling. This is an uh, original drilling derrick. Oh yeah, and the gusher, John Shaw and the Shaw Gusher of 1862. At about 10 o'clock on Friday morning, oil was struck and it came rushing up with a will, filling the well within 15 minutes, shooting a column of oil some 20 feet in the air. Hundreds of barrels of oil were flowing around the well over the road into the creek. Shaw's well was the first gusher in Canada, setting off a frenzy of drilling in oil springs. By the end of 1862, 1,000 wells were produced, 12,000 barrels of oil a day. Shaw drilled his well, instead of digging it, used a spring pole drilling method. Step up and down on the wooden treadle. This moves the flexible spring pole up and down. An iron drill bit weighing 300 to 400 pounds was suspended from it at the end of the pole through the rock. Oil Springs landscape soon sprouted a forest of 1,200 three-pole derricks. So the derricks were used to lift drill rods, bits, cleaning tools out of the wells. So you stand on this and it would run the chisel up and down, basically various drill bits, pieces of drill pipe, drill steel, oh elevators, lifters for the elevators, that's for hoisting drill pipe. Canada pole drill rig, Canadian rig. So this is actual mechanized, yeah, okay yeah, there's a donkey in there, we got a donkey. So this is the well guys, or the, the derrick, the drilling rig, see where all the magic happens. John Henry Fairbank is credited with adapting an ingenious system for pump oil called the Jerker Lion. You can see and hear the squeaky system running on the museum property. Oh, it's working! 
it's working. I knew I heard a noise of a pump jack. I see her in action here. Oh my God, you can see the jerker line working. Holy, oh my God. Okay, so you see how it's pivoting, that beam pivots. The weight that goes down actuates the jerker line. You can see literally how it runs multiple. So that one's running and then that one runs. This is the jerker line setup I was talking about. This is how you can run multiple pump jacks without multiple motors and gearboxes. You can see, look at the oil right there. You can see there's oil literally coming out of the ground right there. And then there's another one, there's three working together. And then that one's working. So the jerker line, it's all sheaves, right? So you see there's, there's one, there's a shiv, goes along. It's got guide posts to another shiv. Then there's another shiv here. You can see the guide posts. And then there's another shiv, right? And then inside the house there is where it all meets together. But this is the jerker line, guys. This is, we have an active pump jack working. We've got oil coming out of the ground and we've got the, like, the actual pump jack with the jerker line working. You can see it right here. It's moving, right? And if you didn't have this jerker line, you'd have to run each one individually, like a, with either a motor or a pump. Oh, this is great, man. This is awesome. So you can see, right, an example of the jerker line, but it's wood. And here, right? And then it goes around and over. Tank wagons. You truckers out there, oil tankers. This was the original oil tanker. A need for storage. These are the original oil tankers, guys. They even got the pumps. They even got the pumps on the top. Another tanker. You've seen better days, though. And you see all the jerker lines around the property, or the jerker line and all the pump jacks around the property. The wells are here, right? Capped wells. Here we go. Jerker line. This is, the, this is what allows all those pump jacks to work together without needing separate pump jack or separate motors to run each pump jack. Prior to the introduction of the jerker line system, one steam engine was required to pump oil at each well. The jerker line system spread quickly throughout the 19th century oil fields. As far as California, the jerker line system is able to pump multiple wells using one engine. The field wheel powered by an engine in a nearby powerhouse rotates back and forth, driving the jerker line to each of the separate wells. The oil is then pumped to a central location where it is collected in tanks. John Henry Fairbank arrived in Oil Springs as a surveyor in 1861, realizing the potential of oil. He sank all his capital into drilling for oil, eventually becoming the area's leading oil producer and businessman. Today, Charles Fairbank continues to pump oil using the jerker line system developed by his great grandfather, built entirely of wood and metal. So that's the jerker line. This is the powerhouse, right? Donkey. Pump jack. It's an all metal one. Gas storage wellhead. Union gas, Dawn operations. The Dawn gas field. It launched the modern petroleum industry in the world as the world knows it and sees it today. Canadians traveled all over the world, 86 countries showing these techniques and this knowledge to the other countries. And now we all have petroleum. I just can't believe they've got this working, man. It's just like, you can see it. You hear it working, you can see it. You can see oil pumping. So you see, it just comes, they all work in unison. And then the powerhouse is over there. And then it's just shivs or fair leads, right? Fair lead just changes the direction of a rope. But this one over here has tons of oil in it, like tons of oil in it coming out of the ground. It's literally just seeping out of the ground here, which was how the Trip Brothers found the asphalt, right? Like, look at it. It's just right there. There's literally oil on the ground there. So one engine is powering all three of these. The other one down there, right? You see the poles suspending the line. Over here, it's just like, oh, this is incredible, guys. 
right at the side of the highway, guys. Like the road is the road is literally right here. And she's pumping. She's pumping. Incredible. Absolutely incredible. So we gotta go look inside now. You guys ever find yourself down in southern Ontario near Windsor or Sarnia definitely make sure you come check it out so in closing we went to oil springs the discovery of oil like the petroleum industry itself if you like oil history and you find it fascinating definitely come to southern Ontario check it out it's near Sarnia or Windsor there's the oil museum of Canada there's an inside museum and an outside museum. And then you've got the Petrolia Discovery entrance port, the auto port, the driving port. And there's the pump jack, Derek's. That's gonna be it for me, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, we're gonna have more to come in the future on petroleum technology and oil and mining and geology. So if you like this kind of content, make sure you like and subscribe and Sasquatch Prospector out.